As a part of I's celebration of July 4th, we decided to look at history from an architectural perspective and learn more about a built space that had a role in the American Revolution. But first, we had to find an expert on architecture during this time period. Luckily for us, we met Matthew. My name is Matthew Webster. I'm the Executive Director of Architectural Preservation and Research at the Colonial Williamsburg Foundation. Matthew operates out of Williamsburg, Virginia, where you can find Colonial Williamsburg, a living museum of American history featuring a number of original or recreated colonial American buildings, as well as reenactments and other educational experiences. We asked Matthew if there was one structure that was particularly relevant to the fight for American independence. Sure, so um, the Powder Magazine is a structure pretty much right, it's right in the middle of Colonial Williamsburg. Uh, it's a structure that's built in 1715, and it's meant to house the arms and ammunition, um, basically the, the objects that would protect the colony. Which worked great, until one Lord Dunmore, governor of Virginia, caught wind of a certain give me liberty or give me death speech, and thought it best to relocate the weapons that had been gifted to the colonists, which led to lots of unrest, and eventually a visit from Patrick Henry and the Hanover County Militia. The gunpowder incident, um, which occurs in 1775, um, actually pushes Virginia into the revolution. So the structure is just a beautiful um, masonry building um, and has a lot of the details that you want to see in an 18th century structure. Um, you know, we don't have many octagonal 18th century structures, but the brickwork, um, it's Flemish bond, which means it's alternating headers and stretchers, um, very common um, in the 18th century. Um, it has what are called closers um, at the corners where they're very neatly coming into the corner. So symmetry is very, very important to them in the 18th century. It has uh, rubbed work in it as well, where they're highlighting those corners and arches, um, again, to, to really take the eye. And so you see this really neatly boxed masonry structure, um, again, for symmetry. Um, and then also the archwork, um, archwork um, and what we call the belt course. But it goes on to live a number of different lives. You know, once that use is no longer necessary, it becomes a market house. It's used as a stable. It's used as a church um, over time. Yet, after all that time, and after surviving nearby battles during the Revolutionary and the Civil Wars, several sales, and even a fire, the Powder Magazine still stands and is just starting to share its history with the team at the Colonial Williamsburg Foundation. And one of the things the archaeologists have found, which is um, really amazing, um, are uh, clay roof tiles um, that we don't haven't seen at any other sites in Williamsburg. Which makes sense, because if any structure in town is going to need a fireproof roof, it would be the one holding the colonists' gunpowder, right? You know, in the 18th century, you see a lot more tile being shipped in from England um, and from Europe to ports in New York and South Carolina, to have that physical evidence is absolutely key uh, to the decisions that we make. The Powder Magazine in Colonial Williamsburg is a fascinating example of architecture during the time period and also how it was rebuilt and repurposed over every subsequent time period. Learn more about this building by visiting the Colonial Williamsburg website. And thank you for celebrating July 4th with us here at IA Interior Architects.